Hi there, my name is Tara Hunt and uh, I'm standing here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada with one of my friends as well as heroes, Jimmy Wales, who just did the opening keynote. Um, welcome to Montreal, Jimmy. Thanks, Tara. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. It's been a long time. It has been. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been traveling a lot. All over the world, yeah, all, all the time. Of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So ridiculous. you're currently living in San Francisco. Currently living in Florida. In Florida, okay. <laughs> so, try to keep track. Yeah. I know that when I was living in San Francisco, you were living there, but we could never actually see yes, each other exactly. there. Exactly. We would see each other in Paris in, in or in London, but never yes, exactly. actually at home. Right. So it's a quite of an exciting uh -huh. lifestyle. And as uh, uh, part of that, you're and what you spoke about this morning, you're going around and you're talking about um, how basically pop popular culture is is becoming smarter is transforming this morning you mm -hmm. talked ab about the uh, s succession of of like shows like I love Lucy to things like mash to to what we have today with loss and what's happening on Wikia with lostpedia mm -hmm. and how actually the audience is driving the yeah future. it's it's very very interesting um, of course uh, it's if we look at, at all of culture, um, that's a really big thing. So I focus in directly just on television. Um, and of course, uh, I don't mean to imply you can't find stupid things on TV anymore. You can, no question about it. That will always be with us. Uh, but my point is really that, that we are seeing uh, a real golden age of very complex TV shows, uh, very subtle uh, moral dramas and things like this uh, that, that are um, really, you know, mentally stimulating, and that one of the reasons for that, and one of the ways that that's happening, is that uh, we have a lot of technology now for watching a show. So, Lost is a great example. So, Lost, incredibly complicated. I think anybody who is a fan of Lost um, will say it's much better to watch Lost with someone, so you can pause every three minutes and be like, Which is "Polar Bear," <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that? from season one or two, yeah. I think. But, um, and. Uh, Additionally, the fans are online talking to each other. It's become very important in, in television uh, to create uh, programs that create conversations because that's a huge method of marketing. But it also is, um, it stimulates people's minds and people like it. They really want some substance. They want some meat. And through the internet, they're able to go and talk about that meat and really enjoy it in a deeper way. So I find that to be an interesting uh, interaction that's going on. Yeah, well, there's, and there's a connection that happens too with total strangers, right? And you talked about uh, geek culture not really having any borders, any boundaries. Right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's funny because uh, Lost, as an example, um, when I first started talking uh, publicly about Lost and Lostpedia, um, I, would, I would not be sure that people all over the world would have heard of it, but it's interesting. I mean, people all over the world know Lost. I mean, it's in, it's in every country, I guess. I mean, I've not found a place uh, where people don't know Lost. Um, and so that, just that example, right? Everything is a lot more global. I, I have fun experience recently, so just think about the, how global things have become. Uh, I have a friend who is a uh, TV host in Saudi Arabia, and she posted on, in English on Facebook a link to a video. The video was from a South American TV show where they were dancing and performing a Bollywood song. So it's like this sort of global moment, right? Mm -hmm where all of these things are taking place. So, you know, the, 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 the Bollywood song is being, uh, you know, created in India, but then being performed in South America. The video being found by someone in Saudi Arabia, uh, posting on Facebook to be seen by me and, and all of our other friends. That's a bit mind-boggling to think about when you really sort of turn your mind back to 1960, and 1970 even, 1980 even, when we thought we were very global, right? Um, and you sort of recognize that, gee, it's, it's a pretty astonishing thing that you have friends all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, okay, so this is sort of out of left field, but do you think that there's going to be a, a decline and perhaps at some point even a death of nationalism? because of this? Well, I, uh, I read this really great book uh, called uh, The Victorian Internet, uh, which Mark Andreessen actually uh, gave to me. And it's about the, the rise of the telegraph and a lot of the rhetoric that came with the rise of the telegraph. Um, it was, in its own way, uh, uh, as fundamental a shift, uh, maybe even more so as the internet. It took, the time it took to get a message from 
uh, London to New York went from weeks to instant, uh, mm -hmm. all in the space of just a few years. And so we suddenly had this world where everybody's interconnected. And some of the rhetoric that came out of that was, you know, things like, and this is the late 1800s, um, like, wow, now ordinary uh, French people and ordinary Germans will be able to communicate and make friends, and this will be the end of war. Well, then we had the 20th century, which right. clearly uh, it didn't happen. So it's a bit of a cautionary tale to say, like, we can get excited about the rhetoric and we can get excited about the end of nationalism, right? right. But let's also remember that that isn't going to happen automatically. Right. That it's really, it's, the, the technology gives us the opportunity to change the world. It's up to us to actually do it. And so you can use this technology to uh, write an angry blog denouncing people from another culture and, and, and sowing hatred and fear and misunderstanding. Or you can work for neutrality, you can work for deeper understanding. It's just a tool, but a hugely, I mean, uh, the possibilities are great. And right. I even think some of the possibilities, say, for peace around uh, this won't come from uh, sort of high-minded, uh, you know, peace initiatives and so on. Right. It'll come from ordinary people uh, grassroots. Not even grassroots even implies organization in a certain right. way. What I mean is, it's like I'm interested in Muppets, and I've got friends who okay. happen to live in Saudi Arabia who are interested in Muppets, and I make friends with them. And it's not political. It's not even close to political. It's not grassroots organizing. It's just I have friends there, people I know and I care about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so suddenly when there's some tension between the companies, I have a human sense of a person over there, not these sort of other, you know. Right. So I think that that kind of uh, communication is, is has great potential. Okay, so though you couldn't deny that there is a fundamental shift then Absolutely. happening in Absolutely. the world. Absolutely. So where do you think? I mean, you you were part of the group that led this shift to uh -huh. date. So you must have some pretty good insight as to where well, that may maybe go. <laughs> I try, but what <laughs> I always uh, tell people is I'm a I'm a carpenter, not an architect. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, the, the thing I will take great credit for uh, with Wikipedia is I just sat down and started saying, I'm going to hire somebody, I'm going I'm to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to hammer away and, and try to make this happen. Uh, as opposed to, you know, we sort of have this myth of the big idea, which is, oh, he had this fabulous idea. Well, I did have the fabulous idea, so did a lot of people, but I just started hammering away. So when I think about the future, because of my position, I get asked these deep sort of guru questions, right? right? right. And I always want to be a little bit humble about it. Okay, well, I'm going to be one of the people. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be one of the people still with my hammer and nails trying to build a, a better yeah. internet, build a better world. Uh, but. I don't know exactly what's going to happen next, and if I did, I'd you know I'd do it. 